Hello there again and welcome to today's video. Um, and today what I am going to do is really what is a quick overview, um, not so much a review because there's many many reviews out there on this watch, uh, but really a quick overview of what uh, comprises this watch and then some general thoughts on why I like this one so much in particular. Uh, and some style comparisons with the predecessors. Um, now, uh, obviously, the most famous uh, predecessor is the two one three. Sorry, the 2531 reference, two five three one eighty zero zero. The the Bond watch that Brosnan made so well uh, known. Uh, I don't have my hands on that, but I do have uh, the. Uh, equivalent styling in the chronograph in the the Seamaster chronograph uh, that we have here now this is a slightly bigger watch it's 41.5 uh, but that's that's barely perceptible and it's a thicker watch but it has all the styling cues of the of the predecessor uh, including the wave dial so we'll, we'll get on to that so what we have here is the Omega Seamaster Professional 300M um, uh, in blue uh, and really it, it was always going to be the blue that I would choose um, it's a 41 millimeter watch in the coaxial uh, the, the serial number I'll, I'll put below I won't repeat it here because it's really quite long as you you all know um, <clears throat> it's got the the 2500 movement which really is uh, based on the ETA 2892-A2 with a heavy coaxial modification. It's got two mainstream barrel barrels with that escapement uh, and it's thought to be more efficient in the space that it uses. Therefore, it's got a higher power reserve of 48 hours compared with the standard, uh, the more standard 42 hours uh, of the ETA 2892 base uh, movement. Uh, beats at 25200. Why does it beat at 25200? Um, I don't know for sure, but uh, as I understand it initially when this movement came up in coaxial, it beat at a higher rate of 28800 and then they reduced it to 25200. Perhaps it was due to problems uh, they were experiencing with uh, uh, the higher rate and uh, this may make it more reliable. I don't know for sure. I don't think it makes a huge uh, difference in uh, what I can perceive uh, of how the second hand actually moves around. Uh, that, that's that's my own perception. Uh, people have said that it makes it more jumpy. It's got a quick set date and, and something I just want to point out uh, is that the date print, uh, if I can get it to focus, if you can see there, is, is in silver as you can see, but it, it's a raised print so that there is a texture or, or a uh, or a layer to the print there that's raised above the date wheel uh, and that's something that I don't notice in, in other watches that I have and just adds you know a little something extra to the watch. Um, the, the case uh, is, is a smidgen under 13 millimeters uh, thick which means it fits uh, very nicely on your, your wrist and because it's got a um, you know a bit of a con conical uh, shaped screw in back there uh, I think it it really does snuggle uh, nicely into the wrist, and has a you know has a very slim profile despite the 13 millimeters of the watch, uh, and certainly I've I've had no trouble getting this uh, under uh, the sleeves of any of my work shirts. Um, uh, obviously, 300 meter uh, water resistance with screw in um, uh, crown case back, and the the novelty of the helium escape valve, which in this particular version is is signed with uh, the symbol for helium rather than the Omega symbol that it uh, used to have in the previous model, as you can see there. Um, uh, sapphire with anti-reflective coating uh, and engraved case back, which which really Omega uh, has taken this to an art form. It's, it's like a, a very uh, nicely minted coin, is what it reminds me of that, that engravement on the case back. Um, uh, of course, the unidirectional rotating bezel, which, you know, is, is solid. And 
and clicks very nicely. Maybe maybe they've made it turn a little bit too easy now because I've noticed that this may move with bumping, uh, and that that may have been in, uh, in response to criticism of the previous model, uh, which uh, many people say to me uh, has been quite difficult to turn. Now this one I think may have been loosened up a little. It's not that difficult, but I can imagine if you have a you know a, a wet glove on it. it may not catch that well on the scalloped edge there. Um, you know, Souping low and over, uh, all over the place, uh, the indices, the hands, uh, the dot, uh, but out of interest, uh, this has two colors, the minute hand uh, and the bezel dot is in green, whereas the rest is in blue, and, and that, that does stand out when you've charged it nice and brightly and go into a dark area. Um, this is the bracelet, the very famous, the very well-known bracelet, and, and I've mentioned this in another video. It's it looks like it's five pieces per length, but really those um, those polished pieces in between the brushed areas are separate. So you know nine pieces per link, uh, meaning a lot of work to go into making this bezel compared to you know for example a three-link bracelet uh, that you see in other watches. Um, what in the end attracted me to this watch really uh, is the design. Uh, it, 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 there's just so much uh, uh, that calls to me in the design uh, really. Um, the dial itself, uh, the way the, you know, the, the, the uh, applied markers uh, uh, stand in there uh, and, and the pattern of it, <laughs> including the 11. Uh, or what looks like an 11 at the 12 o'clock position. Now, some people have said that that's Omega uh, trolling the world with putting an 11 there, but you know it's, it's really to differentiate the 12 o'clock uh, position, uh, I think, or at least that, that makes it easy for me to see. Um, the bezel, you know, this the scalloped edge, um, the, 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 the nice ceramic insert we have here, the case design itself, uh, you know, the mainly brushed, but you know, with this very signature uh, polished bit in the in those those very nice knurled uh, lugs that uh, Amiga uh, have chosen to make with this watch, that beautiful bezel, uh, and apart from the the design. Um, of course, Omega has a name in various things, and and this particular watch uh, uh, was made famous in in the Bond movies, uh, uh, namely Pierce Brosnan. With the previous model, I mean, of course, this this watch hasn't appeared. Uh, this particular model hasn't appeared on a on a Bond movie. Um, it was the predecessor uh, two five three one uh, version, which uh, was made so famous across three movies or four movies, if you if you count the quartz in uh, the first one, Golden Eye. Um, uh, you know, and, and that that's really what catapulted the, the sale of uh, Seamasters uh, in the nineties, as I understand it. Um, now. Uh, you know, my more contemporary Bond has been Daniel Craig. Uh, Pierce Brosnan uh, made his first Bond movie when I was high school, really, and that re didn't really uh, impact me. And certainly, um, I never noticed the watches until I went back and uh, and looked at those movies when I was more interested. Uh, so, it really wasn't wasn't really uh, Bond being the main factor. Uh, Daniel Craig never wore uh, this watch except for a version of it early on in Casino Royale. Everything else has been uh, Planet Ocean, uh, Aqua Terras, and, and more more recently the the Seamaster three hundred, which has been heavily marketed. Um, so mainly, I would say it's all to do with the styling of this watch, uh, which is what uh, interested me the most. Um, now. Comparing it to the, the predecessor model, now again, not the chronograph, I, I'm really wanting to compare it with the, uh, the equivalent uh, Seamaster 300, 2531. What uh, I think is better, um, okay, I, I think the hands are better, they're, they're longer, they, they reach more out into the periphery. Uh, as is obvious here and in, in any kind of uh, proper comparison that you want to look up. Um, I think the applied markers are certainly an improvement. Um, if you can see in the older model, 
Uh, yes, they are applied markers, but they are they are less of a of a of a three dimension, uh, and that's that's not just in the chronograph. That's in the uh, normal uh, uh, Seamaster base as well, uh, and this newer model really does have more of a, a standout to it. It's, it's a thicker uh, applied marker. I think the ceramic insert is definitely an improvement, uh, at least in material. Uh, I think the font is better, but you know people have said in various ways that the visibility of the the aluminium uh, bezel is better. Now this one's very interesting. It's it's a, it's a flush printing. I don't know how they do it, whether it's laser engravement, but it's flush. It's, there's no there's no engraved uh, cutout that you can feel on those printing there. I'm very happy with it. I, I don't use it for, uh, I haven't used it for diving. I'm not sure how realistic uh, uh, the visibility of the minute markers are in diving. I think most importantly, you, you're interested in the, the zero position indicated by the pip um, or, or, the, or the bezel dot. So I, I really don't know what practical difference it makes, but clearly that's a lot more visible in, in this lighting and most lightings, the, the numbers there are a lot more visible than, than this one, which can can really get quite grayed out depending on the, the lighting and how you hold it. So yes, that, that is a potential weakness. Um, now, what else is better? I think the bracelet, you know, the bracelet has screws. So that, that's definitely an improvement compared to the, the pins of the previous model. Um, I think the, the class release buttons, the, the oval polish is better. Uh, people have uh, 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 kind of complained about the class uh, as being a negative overall, but I'll, I'll get to that. Now, what's the neutral differences? Uh, well, the movement's coaxial. Is that good or bad? I, I don't really know. People have uh, complained a lot about, about it, and uh, coaxial, I think, appears to be still not uh, completely proven. Uh, certainly not as proven as the Swiss uh, lever escapement, which has been around for years and years and years, um, if not over a hundred years. I don't know exactly when it was invented, but I think it's probably a century or more. Um, uh, correct me if I'm long, wrong, please. Uh, it beats at a lower beat uh, as a result of the upgrade. Is that bad or good? Well, they're both uh, chronometer certified. Does the, does the lower beat mean lower accuracy? I'm I'm not sure that's actually worked out to be the case as yet. I mean, they're, they're both certainly certified uh, uh, movements. Wave dial, right? That that signature. I'll try to get them to focus. That signature, you know, very nice wave dial of the previous model compared to this lacquer reflective uh, dial, which really has its own beauty. You know, it, it changes color. Uh, depending on the angle of the light hitting it um, and helps I, I think make make the face pop uh, quite a bit more so you know is that good or bad I, I think it's it's really quite subjective I don't think it's necessarily a negative in my opinion I, I you know I, I like both uh, to be honest uh, now the negatives well okay the bezel thickness has been quoted as a negative uh, let me see if it works out in this picture not really but if you see the comparisons of this model with the 2531 uh, there are pictures comparing uh, this thicker bezel with the older slightly thinner bezel some people have said that's because of the ceramic insert I don't know uh, I think it does impact the aesthetic slightly I, I personally don't mind it but I can see why you would say that is a negative in terms of the bezel needing to be thicker um, the bracelet taper, now the old bracelet, uh, it's hard to capture on camera, but the bracelet tapers towards the edges, whereas this one has a more square uh, edge. Now, that may simply be because of the upgrade to screws. I don't know for sure, uh, but certainly I prefer the screw bezel compared to the, the pins. You know, just so much easier to handle. The clasp thickness. Now that's another another thing uh, that people have uh, complained about. If you see that that attachment there, that's a little bit more visible in the new model, and that that fold there sticks out beyond the bezel, the the clasp size, whereas the previous one 
you know, a lot more integrated or flat as you as you see on the side profile and and that fold does not stick out. But you know, seriously, look at the size of the class. You know, there, there is a definite size difference uh, of the class. And you know, would you prefer a less visible class or this longer class? I think that's subjective. I, I probably prefer to have more links visible and less class visible myself. Um, you know, the printing. It's nice to have the Seamaster Professional. I, I think that print that that. Uh, printing of Omega on the new class is an improvement in terms of the visibility, but you know I, I think it was also nice to have the the Seamaster name there, subjective again. But you know you could consider well that's a step down. That's not as specific to the watch that the new model. Okay, and that's that's really I think um, the main differences, uh, at least the main differences that stand out to me and matter to me uh, between. You know the the newer upgraded Seamaster Professional and the the previous model of the Seamaster Professional. That's the video. It's longer than I expected it would take. I hope uh, again this is enjoyable and informative. Certainly, it has been uh, a very enjoyable experience uh, coming uh, to the place of uh, obtaining a Seamaster and appreciating the differences between uh, the new and the old for me. Thank you guys for watching this far as you have. Uh, see you next time.